Hello everyone, it's Anthony here, uh, international therapist and life coach extraordinaire. Well, I just wanted to write a little video, write a little video, make a little video for you about why I think that it's really worthwhile to read books on parenting and raising children, even if you don't have any kids. Um, some of my favourites include How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk, and um, parent effectiveness training and there's also um, raising our children raising ourselves uh, you only need to get one of those I'd start with how to talk so kids will listen listen so kids will talk and if you get as much out of it as I think you will you can try some others if you still think you need them so why would you want to read those books well apart from the fact that if you do have children or plan to in the future, they will equip you with really useful practical tools that you can use in day-to-day -day life to help deal with so-called difficult behaviour in children. Well, apart from that, um, the first thing, if you're interested in self-knowledge and improving your life and healing is they will give you an inventory of ways that you were not spoken to as a child. So you'll be able to compare um, expert advice and examples on dealing with different kinds of behaviour, difficult behaviour um, in children that probably most of the parents uh, and uh, adults around you when you were growing up, maybe all of them, didn't know. So you, it'll help you empathise with your younger self and see that maybe you didn't always get nurtured in the way that you most would have liked to because the people around you didn't necessarily have the skills or tools. I mean, when I went into school as a classroom assistant, I found the skills that I used in these books absolutely invaluable. And, you know, the teachers there that were professionals were very impressed with me and, and saw the effects firsthand of what I was doing. But they weren't asked to read these kinds of books in their teacher training, which is a really great shame. And that's something to do with the, you know, authoritarian structure that schools, schools have, where um, children aren't really seen as means to an, as ends in themselves but as a means to an ends you know if you've got an idea in your head that you've got a job and your job is to teach or to be a parent then a child just becomes a means to you doing a good job a good job of being a parent a good job of being a child so when you look at that this is the first stage of of healing really to actually notice where and be empathetic towards yourself for what you didn't get um, and they'll, it's also really an opportunity to learn how to deal with parts of yourself that are a little bit rebellious and when you're, you're having inner conflicts. I mean, I spend quite a lot of time journaling at this moment um, and giving myself self-care. And one of the things that I do is, uh, an example from a book uh, I read on parenting, you know, is a child spills over a glass of milk and their mother wants to react and force them to clean it up while the child says that they don't want to and instead the parent um, got hold of themselves and said something like um, okay I have a problem here the milk spilled and you don't want to clean it and neither do I um, so what should we do and the child said I know we'll get Sophie who's the dog to lick it up and I'll clean the rest. Phew, you know, what a relief. These skills are like being a martial artist. Instead of meeting a conflict head on, they teach you to take the energy of the situation and move it around a different way. So I might be experiencing an inner conflict. For example, I might want to practice yoga, but I also, I just don't feel like I just don't want to do it. Now there's a part of me that got pushed around and told what to do all the time when I was a child and it's still a rebellious child. So I like to sit down with that part and say the same as that parent. You know, I've got a problem here. I really want to get on and do my yoga and I can see that you're not in the mood. Is there anything that I can do for you? What, would you like to tell me more about that? And really tune into myself and give me get speak to myself the way that I would hope if I had the, the best parent in the world they would they would speak to me and there's there's examples of this like instead of trying to force a child out the door 
to say, well, you know, you really don't like getting up in the morning, do you? You know what? Um, I find the mornings really hard as well. And uh, I've seen examples of uh, transcripts of, of conversations and things like that where that kind of approach can create a connection and melt away the resentment between two parties. So, and from that connection, you can create cooperation, you can create bridges. The communication skills that you learn from reading books on raising children are completely invaluable in adult relationships as well because empathy is universal. Empathy can br build bridges. Plus, look, we're living in a world where most people have not re reached their psychological potential. There's a lot of parts of people that are not fully grown up. And if you can see that when you're speaking to a person, you're speaking to a bunch of different parts that are at various stages of development and don't all have the same uh, capability to stay in this, you know, the most sophisticated part of our brain as in the front. This is the bit that allows us to reason and make clear decisions. Well, when we're feeling scared or threatened or cajoled or anything, we go back here to the, the, the bit at the back which is concerned with our survival. It's not really concerned with our quality of life. And you having the ability to know how to speak to people and uh, and in a way, I say manipulate, but I mean manipulate their energy in a good way. I don't mean the cognitive, sorry, the the negative connotation of the word manipulate. I mean, we do we manipulate all the time. We manipulate our body. Uh, we manipulate our voice when we're speaking. When I when I, I'm self hearing and trying to say how convincingly am I coming across? Is this video going to be engaging? So in that way. When you look at someone and the state they're in and can bring yourself into the present moment and work with their energy, be relentlessly empirical. Don't assume that they're um, thinking with the most sophisticated part of their brain if, if they're not. You know, tune into this situation and if you want the kind of outcomes that you'd like, you need to have the ability to be able to listen to someone and sometimes instead of coming at the situation head on, accept and then use another angle. And the books for parents, um, how to push your but uh, when your kids push your buttons, um, they've got the information in them that you really need in order to be able to take this to the most basic level because essentially they're aimed at helping parents destimulate and make less active the least sophisticated parts of their brain so that they can be tolerant. So let's see, one is um, that it's got good communication skills in it for dealing with people. Secondly, it's good for taking an inventory of what you didn't get growing up and say, you know, where are there some deficits here? How how, where did I not get the quality of care and attention that I might have needed? Thirdly, they give you a good model for dealing with yourself, dealing with your own wounding and making sure that your self-talk can compete with uh, the, the best, you know, uh, sorry, compete's not the really, really right word, but is informed by the best information on how to communicate so that you can nurture yourself. And fourth, they will give you some very good tools for dealing with adult relationships because adults are just grown up kids. Finally, you know, you never know why, why, when you might be in charge of someone else's kids or, um, and the children are everywhere. And if you know these skills, um, they really, they really work and children will really, really, really love you for putting this, these into practice because they're about treating the other with dignity, respect and um, moving your judgment out the way so that you can meet them in an authentic place, not just being an authority or trying to um, exert your will on someone. Now, if you need some help, if you could use some help with nurturing your inner children up to a healthy adulthood, you can contact me on Facebook, Anthony Samroff, or you can send me an email at anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com Dot com. That's Anthony at be yourself and love it dot com, and I, I would love to help you with my services to attain more happiness 
joy, and harmony in your life. See you next slide feed.